This is the Synology DS118 NAS drive and in this video I'm going to show you how to install it, set it up and let you know my thoughts. So let's have a look around the hardware. You've got the Synology logo on the side which is actually a vent. On the front you've got the status, the LAN and the disk indicator and at the bottom the power button which lights up. You can turn the lights off in the settings though if they're in an annoying place. On the bottom we've got the feet, nice rubbery feet and some more ventilation. Not much on the top. On the back you've got the fan, two USB ports, a LAN port which is gigabit and the power. This fan is adjustable in the settings so if it's on too loud or too fast you can turn it down if it's in a living room or something like that. So once you've got these screws at the end taken off you can slide the lid off with a little bit of force and that reveals your hard drive or if you don't have a hard drive a blank space. The hard drive just slots in, plugs in here and then there's screws here and here and here and here that mount it. Really simple. Then you can put the lid back on the opposite way. So back on and then slide it to the left. Do those screws up and away you go. So here we are with my router. I've got the network plug in, the power, the last drive under the telly. And then when I press the power, you can hear that fan, that's about the level of the fan noise. So now that we've got the drive plugged in and connected to the network, we need to set it up. To do that, we go to a browser and then go to find.synology.com. And that is their website, but it searches on their, on your network and finds any drives that are attached. So there it's come up with the disk station, DS118. I'm going to hit connect. It's going to ask me to do the end user license agreement. I'm sure you all read this very thoroughly. Hit OK. Welcome. So we go to setup. DSM is the operating system. We're going to install that, please. All data will be removed on the hard disk, but that's fine. We don't have any data on there. And then we install. So this will format the drive and then install the operating system. So once you've installed the operating system and it's restarted, you're going to get this window asking you to create your administrator account. First thing is the server name. I'm going to call it the Synology NAS. Username and password you can set to anything you want. I'm going to go with admin for the username and a password. Then you hit next. Okay, and then it'll ask you to set up a quick connect account. This is for accessing your NAS over the internet. Um, I don't do this because I just use mine for storing media. But if you want, you can sign up for their uh, cloud service. I'm just going to skip this step. Then it tells you about some packages you can install into the operating system itself. If you want to, I'm going to probably go with the download package. And then obviously you want to share your NAS on the network. And then you're ready to go. I'm not going to sign up for device analytics. This is going to give you a little tour. So that's it. You're all up and running. Um, the main menu is like almost like a Windows operating system where you can move Windows around. Um, Package Center is kind of like the App Store, as it were, where you can install applications, um, see ones you've got installed, search for new ones that they've made. There's all sorts of things in here, media servers, BitTorrent clients, that kind of thing. In Control Panel, you've got all the user settings, sharing, all the stuff you set up already in the wizard at the beginning there, you can modify users, you can uh, talk about domains, you can set up Quick Connect if you didn't do it at the beginning, all sorts of things about time, um, hardware and power. One specific useful one in hardware and power is the fan speed. I'm going to go on quiet mode and also you, want to, you might want to drag the indicator down for the LEDs on the front of the unit if it's in a living room or something. I've set mine to off. Then you've got File Station, which is one of the applications you've installed. This is where you manage all your uh, shared folders, all the drives, that kind of thing. If I had data in here, there'd be full of data. This is like a file manager, file explorer kind of thing. And then the help. And in the bottom right, you've got this system health, which shows you how it's performing, gives you your IP address, how long it's been up, CPU resource, and all that really good stuff. So another thing I like to do to make it a little bit easier to use the NAS drive is map a drive to it. 
um, if you go to your computer and then go to map a network drive at the top you can map a network drive I'll go with S for Synology I guess you can see it there the Synology NAS I'm going to be using it for storing video so I'm just going to map it to the video folder I'm going to hit OK reconnect at sign in and finish that way if I'm ever in anything I can directly access the S drive which is actually the Synology NAS drive. So overall, if you want a feature-rich, really useful mid-range NAS drive, I'd highly recommend the DS118 from Synology. If you need something to back up photographs, I might go with the dual bay version, the 218, just so that you've got that RAID to make sure if one hard drive fails, the other one's got the backup. I've put links in the description below to show you where you can buy this. As I said before in the video, you can buy the just a shell if you've already got a hard drive, or you can buy it with a 2, 4, 8 terabyte hard drive if you really need it. Please let me know in the comments below if you found this video useful. Hit the subscribe button to be notified of my latest videos, and I'll see you in the next one.